Hello everybody, it's Brandon again. I know it's been quite a while since I've done an update on the JavaScript raycasting engine that I was working on, so I thought I'd go ahead and give you an update today since I have added a few cool things. Um, <laughs> I know it's been a long time. I made a lot of videos on the channel that have nothing to do with the raycaster since I've done this series, so most of the new subscribers probably don't care about it, but for all my original subscribers that were here for the raycasting stuff, you should like this, and I haven't forgotten about you. So just to give a recap of where I was, and for those of you who don't know anything about ray casting, this is kind of the um, method for creating a 3D game that was back in the day, like with Wolfenstein 3D. Now this is running in a browser on JavaScript, and with just the basic settings right here, you have something that's very similar to what you'd see in old Wolfenstein, except for I do have transparent textures. I don't remember if Wolfenstein had that or not. It doesn't matter. So you got your walls, you got your little hand, you can punch, you got sprites. I don't know if you can see it here. There's particles that fly off the wall, so there's particle effects in this one. You have animated textures. As I said before, see-through textures. Uh, you got the doors that work. You can different textures on the side of walls. Here I got a sprite that's inside of a glass box there. Anyway, all sort of basic stuff. This is all the standard stuff you need in a Raycaster. This is the standard stuff you'd find in a game like Wolfenstein, and that's all here. That's all good. So then the next thing when you're building a Raycaster on any engine is you're going to think you want floors and ceilings. So I got that covered. Let me go ahead and turn that on. We now have floor and ceiling textures. Now these are basic ones. I just drew them in paint basically just lines, but the complexity of the floor and ceiling textures is irrelevant. Um, the performance will be the same either way. And so we can go around and see. And I should have, I didn't do this to demonstrate here, but the entire map doesn't have to be the same floor and ceiling, right? Uh, different tiles can have different floors. I, I should have done that for demonstration purposes, but I didn't. So anyway, this all still works good with the floors and ceilings. Of course, the FPS is taking a little bit of a hit. But it's still reasonable. It's still totally playable. So after you get floors and ceilings working, probably the next thing you want to get is lighting. And this is more of the uh, the holy grail of it. And this kind of kills performance. But I did make some good progress since my last Raycaster video, which I'm going to show you now. Let me turn the lighting on. So now we have the lighting engine working. And this is full dynamic lighting. And uh, shadow casting, which is the latest thing I've implemented. As you can see, the light here from that room is shining into this window. And you can see the walls cast the appropriate shadows that you'd want them to, which is cool. I also have light maps. You might be able to tell the uh, green area on the door here kind of glows. That is from the light map that the texture has. Here you can see some more shadow casting on the light. You can see how the sprite uh, adopts the lighting from the environment which is pretty cool. And here you can really see the light maps in effect uh, on this animated texture. So the light maps are animated too, which is cool. You can see the particle effects can generate light as they go. So you have, um, that just shows that the lighting is dynamic. If I uh, shoot with my fist, I kind of shoot out a light and it shows some particles off of the corner that glow. So this is, um, this is kind of the cool stuff I've added in the meantime. Oh, the lights are fully colored. As you can kind of see here, I got a red light in there. You probably saw an orange one earlier. That's a white one there. So we have different color light maps. Uh, we cast shadows. We do all the cool stuff. Let me just show you one more map I've been working on. For you guys who follow me on Ape Apps, you know that I had an old game called Death 3D that I had originally written as a raycaster. It was my first attempt at raycasting. But the performance sucked, so I went ahead and uh, migrated it over to uh, WebGL to get quite a bit better performance. But I always kind of had in my mind that I wanted to do a Raycaster. Not because it's good, but because it's fun for a programmer. And so I started remaking the first level of my Death 3D map using this new Raycaster. And so it kind of demonstrates some of the different textures, some of the different sprites. So here, you go in a door. Um... This, there's a few lights in here, things on the wall, we'll move along. Here's a problem I have. The light map animation does not sync up to the uh, actual texture animation, so let me turn off the light map. 
and show you everything's supposed to be glowing red and it actually looks nice when it's synced up properly but for some reason they're out of sync one more thing i got to work on and here we got light maps uh, you can see the lights on the ceiling there's a light map on the ceiling texture also here you can tell the floor has two different textures here here i'm in a room the fps drops quite a bit in this room it's dropping even more since i'm screen recording and um Here's another wall with a light texture and a light map. Here I have a TV and I don't know if you could tell on the video, but the light kind of flickers and glows. That's another feature it can do. So it's all pretty neat. So this is a progress I made on the JavaScript Raycaster. I know there's other guys on YouTube here doing Raycasters and um, I always like watching their videos and seeing their progress and hopefully they can see the progress I made and maybe get some ideas from what I did. I know, um, Using JavaScript, you're not going to get the performance as some of the engines written in C or other languages. But I think for JavaScript, this actually runs pretty good. And even with all the features turned on, it, the frame rate does dip down, but it's still playable. So it's something cool. Um, I'll probably post more of the videos on this Raycaster if people are interested. If not, I'll probably get back to posting Chrome videos. So just let me know what you guys want to see. I hope the other guys working on Raycasters are making good progress too. It's a fun project, and uh, yeah, so anyway, that's where I am right now. Thanks for watching. Bye now.